next. Wake up to a new morning. It's time to celebrate. With Naomi Judd. Tune in as she shares stories of real people taking on life's challenges. This is a powerful discussion. We're here to give you ideas to keep you moving forward. Naomi's New Morning, coming up next on Hallmark Channel. I'm Naomi Judd on today's show. It's Take Your Daughter to Work Day. I've brought my firstborn. I call her Hurricane Wanona. She's going to be here to treat us to some gorgeous music from her new CD, A Classic Christmas. Rejoice. Rejoice. In fact, it's family and friends day here all day. My mom, my aunt, and here's a story for you. A father of four goes all the way to Russia to rescue his adopted daughter that he's never even seen, except in a dream. I said, she's in trouble. We've got to find her, and I know where she is, but I don't know how to get to her. So, grab yourself a cup of coffee, put your feet up, have a little Christmas cookie. I'm Naomi Judd, and it's a brand new morning. <laughs> Every day's a new day. Every day's a new way to help somebody who needs somebody like you. There's a power you can pass along to heal a heart and make it strong. There's hope with every dawn. Every day's a new day. One week away, this is my son-in-law staring at me. How weird is this? It's just one week away. Have you bought my present? Yes, I have. Oh, good, good. Two of them. You got me two? <laughs> you know what? I just got um, a present from some fans, affectionately. A big thing of walnuts. And they're, they're the Juddettes. They come all the way from California. We've been friends for, what, 20 years or something? So these are my nutty <laughs> buddies over here. And I feel really like a kid at their own surprise party, but I kind of threw it <laughs> for myself today. My mom, Polly, is here. The redhead sitting next to Roach. My Aunt Roberta right here. Uh, and lots and lots of friends and family over here. <sighs> so this is an extraordinarily special day. I'm so glad you're with me. Winona has a brand new CD. It's her first solo Christmas album called A Classic Christmas, and it is that. You're going to get to hear some beautiful, that's three syllables, beautiful, four, from her today. And if you're like me, I'm just tingling right now because there's all this love and warm and fuzzy stuff, but also right before the holidays, sometimes you want to holler because you're in a daze. Uh, so we're going to try to give you a sanity clause because, <laughs> because we're going to be discussing what gives this precious holiday season its true meaning, the spirit of giving. <laughs> Speaking of sharing love, today, uh, I don't know, the word isn't even honored to have my sidekick in everyday life with me. She's been called by the biggest critics the voice of her generation. As I was forced to leave our duet together, her first solo album sold over Five million setting a new record. But to me, she hates it when I say this, but she's my little girl who used to hide her peas in her glass of milk. Please welcome Hurricane. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you. Hi. Hmm. Have a seat. Thank you, Mrs. Judd. Welcome to my show. <laughs> you have a lovely place. 
<laughs> this is so weird. I've been practicing for a week, not crying. And I say your name, and here it starts. I mean, what are we going to do? What do you want to do? <laughs> um, let's talk about me. <laughs> yeah. That's what I, know. <laughs> I mean, how weird is this? We've been interviewed together for 20 years. Now I'm supposed to ask you questions? I know. It's kind of a new idea, isn't it? <laughs> I usually, um, I, I used to sort of pick on mom because she did most of the talking and then when I went out on my own, I did all the talking and so in our family we're learning how to listen. It's like we literally have a thing where our life coach will say, you talk 10 minutes and then I Reflective mirror listening. you and then you have to listen to me for 10 minutes and then, because this is a new way of doing business. But I have to admit I was pulling in and I thought, how ironic it is for me to do your show. No. I mean, when God closes a door, he opens a window. I think that's one of the and things we represent to people. Applause, that. applause, don't you think? <laughs> I mean, honestly, uh, I think our, our family is such living proof of, what's that song, you get knocked down, but you get up again. Yep. You just keep on. You, you always. So do you. You always have your party dress in the closet oh. ready to go at any time. <laughs> You know that it's like a Superman thing. You just keep reinventing yourself. You said something about mirroring. Mm -hmm. When you mirror, um, you literally just reflect back to the person without your interpretation, without any body language or impressions. That's really hard. I think, to in layman terms, it's an it's an opportunity to listen without any sense of judgment or opinion. Um, and for me to give back, the greatest gift we can give someone is listening. And I'm not, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I'm always thinking about what I'm going to say while someone's talking to me because we have an agenda and some people would rather be right than be loved. Mm. So say, I don't know about, say that again. I don't know about you guys, but there are times with you when I'd rather be right mm -hmm. than be in that compassionate love. So our Ted, our wonderful Ted Klontz taught us how to really be in the moment and even though I don't I, and I don't have to agree with you listening does not mean I, I have to agree with you now that was interesting to me I can hear you and be with you and I can disagree with you and still be present and understand why you would feel that way so we actually both learned something what a concept but we're talking about this is our Christmas show and we're talking about giving and the gift of your presence and the gift of listening is as you said the greatest thing you could ever give but so many years when I was a screamer, because I was this neurotic mom on the edge trying to just keep a jar of peanut butter on the table for us, I screamed at you all. And you told me one day that that changed. I mean, I, that I changed when you explained to me that when I scream, remember what you said? When I scream, it well, scares I you. Down. Right, I'm scared. Because I was all you had. I went through it with my daughter, so paybacks are hell. Um, I went through it and Gracie said, when you yell, I think you're mad at me and yeah. I feel a lot of pain and I would need or like for you to not raise your voice when you're mad at me and I intend to do my part in trying not to make you mad at me. And I said, thank you, Grace. Yeah. So this is new stuff and I think we should have our own show, a mother-daughter yes. show. <laughs> it, is a, it is a show, but... Um, as you guys might imagine, we're a pretty typical family with all the mother-daughter issues. My mom, who's in the audience, and I... We just have better hair and clothes sometimes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so last night, we had sort of our professional meeting. You told me congratulations on having my show. And as a mother, that means the world because, you know, kids tend to take their parents for granted. Mm -hmm. And I think you think that I am some sort of superwoman that I'm always able to... Well, I want you to be my mom, and sometimes when I come over, I forget that you have needs too, <laughs> because you're my mom, and I want to say, you're not going to believe what happened to me, and just spill everything, and sometimes I just want to be your daughter, and I really want it to be about me. It's important for me to say, and, and how are you doing? And uh, that's good stuff. And I know We're healing. I think we're a work in progress. Our, our recovery motto is progress, not perfection. So anybody out there in TV land who's idolizing or worshiping, forget it. Don't it's do so it. a work in progress because yesterday as a mother I really failed and had to go literally before my daughter and say, you know what, I blew it today, didn't I? And she goes, yeah, and I'm not able to forgive you right now, but I'll let you know. 
Gracie said yeah, that? Yeah, she said that, and it took about 10 minutes. I wasn't letting her out of the car until she did. <laughs> but, uh, no, we did. We worked it out. So it's a work in progress, and, and there's no formula, but we are certainly trying new ways. But one of the things that we've learned to do, especially, um, and I'm talking to all you moms and daughters out there, Confrontation does start when the other person doesn't live up to your expectation. This is getting real personal for me, but um, tell them what we did for Thanksgiving with the list of wishes and... Well, Thanksgiving was very chaotic. We have three women with three very different schedules, and my fear was that we would all three show up with um, really wanting our needs met. Mm -hmm. And so six months ago, I called sort of a meeting um, and unfortunately unfortunately I've been the mediator in the past um, and I didn't want to do that anymore uh, so I wanted all three of us to in, in other words instead of coming to you and then going to Ashley because that's a role that I've had yes. I thought let's do this differently so we all got together on the phone because we couldn't meet in the room together well excuse me the first thing we did we, we sent each other faxes and we just said let's yeah. come up with an actual wish list. This is yeah, what we want to see. Yeah, but you cross things out and put your opinion in. So I was like, well, that's interesting. <laughs> Ashley's put this, and I see it crossed out, and Mom on the side goes, well, I'd like to, da, 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 da. And so I realized this, and I felt it. I got a lot of feelings um, in reading the list, and I realized we all want so much to have our, what is it, hopes and joys and our expectations. Same kind of thing in Thanksgiving. Who's going to carve the turkey? I want it done before we get there because yeah. I am not going to be standing in the kitchen with somebody saying, you know, somebody power struggle. Somebody with a sharp knife. And we can argue about the weather. I mean, we can argue about anything so fast it can go to you know where. And I said, I'm not doing it this year. So we tried very hard to get it worked out. We got on the phone, and it didn't go so well because we definitely had opinions. Yeah. And so it doesn't always go well. But, boy, we tried. But the list... You not only get straight on what you would like for it to look like, mm -hmm. but certain things. We call it being on company behavior. Company behavior is being nice that one or two times a year <laughs> when you really can't stand that aunt, cousin, uncle, friend that's standing before you. And so we're liars. And literally, we're lying because we act like, but what we do is we, we're real. And sometimes we say, you know what? The serenity prayer, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, mm -hmm. which is aunt so-and-so. Give me the courage to change the things I can, which is me. Mm -hmm. And the wisdom know the difference. I ain't going to change you, so I've got to change my behavior. Mm -hmm. And maybe only stay an hour and get out of Dodge. Yeah. You know? Okay, now they're telling me I have to go to teleprompter. Okay, up next. Well, is it home. over? No, no, oh. no, honey. It ain't. This is getting started. So call a friend. <laughs> Tell Oprah. That is so attractive when on. you do that. That's so feminine. <laughs> okay, now, why don't you read it for me? Why don't you make me? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> See, I revert. You know? Oh, up next, I'm going to treat us, oh, I'm going to treat you to a song from my very first Christmas CD. And later, and later, and later a father of four has a very disturbing dream that sends him around the world to rescue a little girl. This is a great story I've already seen. Check this one out. that the other day we worked together for the first time in a long time we sang Love Can Build a Bridge at the Martin Luther King dedication. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to give a little hint behind the scenes about how extraordinary it is for us. Mm -hmm. And I'm thrilled because my daughter, Winona, is here with me today. 
one of the things that you and I love to do is called random acts of kindness, you know, where you pay mm -hmm. for the next person's cup of coffee and all that. Mm -hmm. And I want to acknowledge not just behave for one minute, because I want to acknowledge that last year you were named CMA's Humanitarian of the Year. And right now you're nominated for Tennessean of the Year. So I just want to share with the whole world out there that uh, you do have the biggest heart of anybody I've ever known. And that Christmas is just sort of another day because you believe in, in this attitude all the time. Yeah, and I have less money than I've ever had because <laughs> I keep giving it all away. And no, seriously, I realized that I didn't feel worthy of a lot of my success. So I had this thing of if I got a lot, I gave a lot away. And now I'm learning how to have moderation, which is hmm. I love my neighbor more than myself. What's that about? So now I'm actually learning how to save ah. and I'm on a budget. Did you know that? You said you haven't ha been allowed to have a credit card in years. It's not that I haven't been allowed to have a credit card. <laughs> that was back when I was 18. <laughs> Hello, I'm 42. <laughs> Did you forget? <laughs> You're absolutely right. I've learned how to live by cash, and I really don't Man, like breaking a hundred dollars. Yeah, I don't like breaking a hundred, so I'm more likely to keep a hundred. Now I'm hoarding one hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> Just shift the addiction. Um, so I'm learning how to give, but to also give to myself, which is kind of like this new concept, um, and it's been a struggle because I get so much more out of giving to other people. I remember the first time I ever came to New York. I had all this per diem, and I got rid of it like within an hour because I gave to every person. I was like the first time ever here. I gave to every homeless person I saw, and I made it like three blocks. And I realized, you know what? You taught me how to be like that, but I also had to learn that I'm worthy too. Mm -hmm. But because I, did, I felt like, gosh, we have so much, I did a really good job of getting rid of it. Okay, talking about your Christmas CD. <laughs> Segway. <laughs> um, for me, right now, this is an early Christmas present, and the critics have been saying that you've revealed a new vocal sound, I'm, I'm quoting, but that it's still as warm and familiar as your most favorite Christmas memories. The new Christmas CD is called A Classic Christmas. It is a must-have for your holiday collection, and here she is to sing oh, one of my favorites. Are you doing this for me because I love it? Uh, yeah, it's your show. O oh, come, O oh, come, Emmanuel, my songbird, Winona.
gentlemen, our musical family, Vicki Hampton, Robert Bailey. Good they, extended family. They, we, we say that music is the language of the soul. Yes. That's why they say that you're a soulful singer, Miss, Miss Thang. <laughs> that was so gorgeous. And we're going to have her come back in just a little bit and sing for us because I'm the mom and I told her she <laughs> is. Next coming up, we've got a father who woke up after a terrible dream and then found himself racing across the world to rescue a little girl. I told you about this, mm -hmm. and it blows your mind. You gotta see it to believe it. For your free Asheville Visitor's Guide and holiday package information. Aunt Roberta, my mom. You know, it's very tempting to get so caught up in all the craziness of the Christmas season that we forget to just stop and be and appreciate what actually matters most, the simple pleasures of just being around our families. For my next guest, the importance of family was brought home to him in a very dramatic way a few holiday seasons ago. Just before Christmas 2002, Rick Solanskis woke his wife up in the middle of the night to tell her about a bizarre dream of a frightened child in a basement in Russia. A dream that ultimately sent him on a remarkable around the world adventure. Aunt Roberta, Mom, watch. We have four children. Tony and Maria this year will graduate from college and Andrew will go into eighth grade. Jessica is in high school. And basically we were looking forward to the house emptying out a little bit, basically. That was it. <laughs> Everyone thinks their father is crazy, and yes, he does act crazy in many situations. My parents said, you know, we have something to talk to you about. He said, Mom, he said, he said if I start crying, don't get upset. Well, that really scared me. He began to tell us the story of the dream that he had on December 23rd at 3 o'clock in the morning. I was standing on a pair of, of, of basement steps, and there were people standing around me. I can't tell you who those individuals were, but I was absolutely positively sure they knew me very well. And we're looking down the steps, and there was a cavernous area that you would walk behind that had a little glow of red light coming from behind it. This little child looks out from behind that wall, a little girl. She looks so sad. and. I reached over and I picked her up and I held her in my arms, but she put her arms around my neck. And I started to walk up the steps. And standing at the very top of the stairs in the doorway was my wife Stephanie. And I took this child to Stephanie. And as I reached her, I woke up. And I could tell by looking at him, something was worrying him there. And he said he had a dream of a little girl that was down in the basement and that he looked down the stairs and saw her and went down and got her. I know this doesn't sound right. I said, but there is no doubt in my mind 
that the, that child I had physically held in my arms, physically held that baby in my arms. I said, she's in trouble. We've got to find her. And I know where she is, but I don't know how to get to her. That night I went up and I was looking on the internet and every time I typed something into the internet, one name kept coming up. It said on their open door, adoption. Rick called me on December 26th, the day after Christmas. I think he was really surprised that anyone was at the office and told me that he had had a very vivid dream about a specific child that he felt God was speaking to him through this dream that he was to go and adopt his child. I said, I know I'm calling you out of the blue. I said, but I really need to share something with you. And if you think I'm crazy, you tell me and I'll move on to wherever God tells me to go. I told him, of course not. God speaks to people in different ways. It's a biblical truth that how God reveals something to one person may not be the same as God reveals even the same thing to a different person. I called my dear friend Armando and the following Thursday we met at a restaurant and spent most of the day there. I've done sketches like this, just, you know, portraits, you know, years and years and years. So, you know, the portraiture part of it is not that difficult for me. Um, getting an exact representation of what somebody's trying to describe to me is the difficult part. Armando sat there and started drawing. Many, many, many hours later, he finished. And he was just very excited. And when he saw the girl, he was very moved, I could see, with the fact that, you know, this was exactly what he saw in his dream. And I went home and showed Stephanie the picture. And that night, we emailed it to Ed Thomas. I've never had one, someone tell me that they had a vivid dream about a specific child to the point of being able to have a sketch artist draw a picture. A couple weeks later, on a Wednesday morning, I went to work. And about 11 o'clock in the morning, my wife Stephanie calls me at work. And she said, uh, Rick, we just got a phone call from the agency that was doing the home study, checking our family out for adoption, for approval for adoption. She said, our home study is complete. And sure enough, uh, the day that the home study agency called Rick to tell him that the home study was completed, he went back on that website and there was one picture added in it, and it was the, the picture of, of his daughter, Nadia quite remarkable. I'm sitting there looking face to face with the very little child I held in my arms in that dream. The child, not a, like a representation of some child, the little girl. And I, my secretary came in, I started crying. I called my wife. I had talked Stephanie through how to get on the computer. And she, she saw her and there was no doubt it was her. The entire thing has been uh, amazing and special and, and the fact that, that we found this child on this website that matched this drawing. They contact Russia and they start the process. We, in total 100% faith, walked forward knowing that little girl would be our daughter and that we would go there and we would bring her home. I'd never even dreamt in my wildest dream that I'd ever be going to Russia, more or less to go get my daughter. We walked up those steps in that orphanage and we sat in a little waiting room. And it seems like just seconds later, they brought her to the door. And there she was. And they gave her a little nudge and she walked right over into our arms. And it was as though we had never, ever been apart. You see, Nadia was born in a town about 200 kilometers from where her orphanage was located. They looked for her mother for 12 months. In the end, they tracked her down in hospital because she'd been sick. And they said, okay, you know, we're looking after the child, do you want her? And they said, no, she signed her over. And they said, oh, look, they signed her over on the 23rd and Nadezhda Nadia became available for adoption. On the very day I had that dream, it's just like when a child had been born and, and you walk and look in that window and they, and they open the little blinds and you see that little baby and you wait for that moment and you say, what a miracle. And Nadia was no different. 
I'll never forget the feel that I had when I saw him walking with that little girl. You can't. I knew that it was our little girl. She has changed our lives as much as most likely we will end up changing hers. It's like God, through this child, looked into my heart and smiled. Amazing as the story is, it doesn't end here. I'm here right now with Rick Solanskis and his wife Stephanie, and as soon as we come back, we're going to find out more about what this unbelievable family is up to. And we're going to meet the real Nadia. Stick around. Next Sunday, wake up to a new morning. You all know what time it is? With Naomi Judd. Tune in as Naomi shares stories of real people beating the odds. I understand 21 months sober. Yeah. Facing their fears and never losing hope. Each week, we pose a provocative question. How do you describe love? I was so excited to hear this was a topic for today's show. And I'm so happy to get to share what I've discovered. Naomi's New Morning, next Sunday at 11 on Hallmark Channel. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Critics and fans agree. Winona's A Classic Christmas is the best Christmas album of the year. A classic Christmas from Winona, in stores now. Transform the way your system can change your body and get a full week of food absolutely free. Call now. Rick and Stephanie Salonkas, and in a minute, we're going to get to meet Nadia, the daughter Rick dreamed about. So tell us about what has life been like since you brought Nadia back from Russia. What's amazing, Naomi, is that from the time that she walked into our home, it was as though Nadia was never not there. It was, um, Stephanie and I had a discussion about this at one point, it was, it was like she was born of her womb and someone fast forwarded the tape. It was <laughs> like she was never not with us. We can never think of a moment that she was not with us. And the boys, your, your older sons, were in the makeup room while we were getting her curls and everything, and they were videotaping her. And I mean, just like they're, she's this thing on a pedestal with them. Oh, absolutely. But she is a little sister, too, though. What'd you think when he woke you in the middle of the night and said he had this dream? Oh. <laughs> Did you think he'd been hit in the head and rendered <laughs> unconscious for half an hour? I think you think very fast, just like all these things kind of go through your mind. I tend to sort of think, okay, what does this mean, rather than quite as literally as he did that. Yeah. From the moment I brought her home, I knew in my heart I had to return to Russia, that she was not the end of a miracle. She was the beginning of what oh. I was to do with the rest of my life. So you found a Project Anna? The Anna Pro Foundation? I formed the Project Anna Foundation just so I would have the nucleus to accomplish what I was doing. I knew I had to use all my talents, all the gifts God gave me, because I realized something, that this world wasn't about me. That's what hit me through this whole thing. It wasn't about Rick Solanskis. It was about what I would use my gifts for to touch others' lives. And those children in Russia are my paramount focus. You're talking about situations with no running water, no sanitation, no central heat, uh, a little under a million children in the orphanages alone, and the most wonderful people in your, that I've ever met in my life, but they have so little. So I knew I had to go, and I went. The second time, I went back and I started going village to village, hospital to hospital, baby home to baby home. And I knew that it was just driving me till the day God takes me off this earth. They say the best way to make a dream come true is to wake up. Where is she? She's right here. Come on, Nadia. <laughs> Come over here on this side so everybody can see. We got curls in the dressing room. <laughs> we got curls. And your two brothers were taking pictures of you, and you told them to go away. Right? <laughs> Why? Because they were sick. Because they were being ornery. <laughs> being ornery? Is that Russian for <laughs> mischievous? <laughs> Are you real? <laughs> are you real? You are just the bee's knees. Do you know what that means? It means I think you're wonderful. And thank you guys for being with us today. Thank you. Really appreciate your, your presence and your story. Coming up.
This is our family and friends show. So I've got my blood here and some personal friends. We're going to wish you a Merry Christmas when we come back. Wake up to a new morning with me, Timberly Whitfield. And it is with Naomi Judd. Tune in as Naomi shares stories of real people beating the odds. Join me as we find the new meaning of generosity. Naomi's New Morning, next Sunday at 11 on Hallmark Channel. on this special time we've been talking about the spirit of the holidays and you all know how important I think family is I'm in my the deep end of my gene pool right now <laughs> but what if relationships are strained during the holidays which makes it even more stressful or what if this is your first holiday season without a loved one or if you're alone or if you have somebody overseas in the military well that's what friends are for and I've invited some of my friends and family to um, share and this is completely spontaneous how you make the holiday season more pleasurable I'll start with my friend Gloria and just as a side story we have a group of couples and we got together the day before Thanksgiving and had our little dinner before we met with our families <laughs> do you remember the toast at the restaurant yes it was pertaining to family you can't choose your family but you can choose your friends and yes. friends are very important yes mm -hmm. You have anything you want to say? Anything you figured out about the holidays that makes it makes it less stressful? I always, since I've lost my mother, I always give a period of time where I just reflect on the the time when she was present, and I embrace that. And I may tear up and do that deal as well during that period piece. But after that, I definitely yield to family, and um, if I am in town. <laughs> I get two friends, <laughs> and, uh, and it's, it's good. I make it good, but I always give homage to my deceased mother because she's the most important figure and the best friend I will ever have. Mm -hmm. You hear that? You hear that? Mm -hmm. Now we'll go to Roach. Yes. <laughs> You're going to say uh, something about therapy, aren't you? No, no. This, I think this is enough therapy for us for today. Uh, but... <laughs> I actually uh, really enjoy going to church the night before Christmas and, and giving some glory to God. And that's how I feel that, that starts the season out of Christmas. And then, of course, my family is rather big, too, with triplet sisters. And, uh, Wait a minute. Marlene, Arlene, and Darlene, yes. hey. And then I have okay. to mention my mother and father, Carl and Betty, of course, because my father really likes to be his hear his name over <laughs> TV <laughs> and so uh, and then family and games we like to play games and also with the Judd household we like to play games too and we're very uh, competitive if you will do you think <laughs> she's the worst or the best I should say at games okay now this guy back here I He's probably not going to say anything. He's good for maybe 30 words a day. That's all I can get in. Seriously. <laughs> 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 what are you laughing at? <laughs> because I feel your pain. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, the, for me, uh, the best holidays are uh, the least amount of uh, stress and planning and the least that we can do because we're so busy all the rest of the year so I just look forward to calm and quiet and and watching the football games <laughs> bring me my slippers and <laughs> well this is sort of a scrapbook moment here I love this coming up Winona is going to leave us in the holiday spirit with another song from her classic Christmas CD Christmas season with one of our favorite songs. It's called The Messiah, and it was written by our spiritual mentor, Don Potter, who's also the third judge because he's the guitar player. And would you call him your musical arranger? He's my director. Musical director. Spiritually and musically. It's called The Messiah. This is from her new Christmas CD, and I hope it blesses you as much as it does us. 
we were talking about traditions, there's a time every Christmas, I think it's Christmas Eve, where I get quiet. So much has changed in my life, but the one thing that stays constant is the Word. And I read the story of the birth of uh, our Savior. And it reminds me of the reason for the season. It must have been something Being born in a manger With a sheep from the fields And a star shining over your head It must have been something Seeing three wise men On their knees before a newborn With their eyes all aglow And in their hearts they know It's the Messiah He's come at last It's the Messiah have been something speaking the word of your father with the promise of life and peace forever it must have Something walking the streets of Jerusalem, Jerusalem, with the sins of the world on the innocence of a land. But soon everyone will know it's the Messiah. Concept of attraction versus promotion. I've been promoting this. Now I know you're going to be attracted to Winona's new CD, a Christmas, a classic Christmas. You'll want it for yourself and as Christmas gifts to everybody. Why? Robert, Vicky, come on over and, and join us here. I want to thank all of my guests for sharing their time and their stories with us today. You do it. A wise man once said, the best of all gifts around any Christmas tree is the presence of a happy family 
and friends all wrapped up in each other. Oh, oh. And remember, my mind is always open. My door is never closed. And as you can see, I've always got lots of room for you here at my table. <laughs> <laughs>